Hey everybody, we're back in the trailer here. And we're gonna, in this video, we're gonna start hooking up some more power. I got some parts in. I've been doing a little polyurethane in here. Getting ready for it. I was kind of torn between painting it and polyurethane in it, but I figured if I paint it white, I can't ever really polyurethane it without a bunch of sanding, but polyurethane, I could paint it white if I changed my mind. Right now, we've got a pair. I got these green OE batteries. They are the lithium phosphate batteries, which are supposed to be more stable than the lithium ions. They're 100 amp hour, got two of them. Green OE. There are so many of these batteries. I did some research, finally gave up. These were priced right and had real good reviews on Amazon, so that's what I went with. Well, we've got the two batteries. We'd already put in the 15 amp shore power there. So we'll be mounting the batteries to the floor. We'll be putting in an inverter. Go ahead and mounting it up. I could have went with pre-built battery cables, but then I'm limited to the lengths they've got in stock. So I just bought some bolt cable, the ends, and when there's an opportunity to get a new tool, I go with it. That's a crimper to put those on. I figured that will be handy later on. You know, anytime a vehicle needs a battery cable, once again, you're not limited to what they've got in stock. You can make your own. And that little white box has got a fuse panel in it that we'll be using to hook up the 12 volt stuff. And then I picked up a battery charger. It's only four amp, but it'll do the lithium batteries, deep cycle, whatever. We'll mount that to the wall so we can plug it in and maintain the batteries. First up, let's get the batteries in place. I think I'm gonna set them about like that. The air conditioner will probably go over here inside the cabinet once I've got that built. And then we'll mount the inverter on the wall above the batteries. Okay, the instructions on the battery said to leave a minimum of one inch of space around them. So I'm going to build some frame to go on the floor to separate them and space them about like they are right now. And we'll tie them down and then we'll mount the inverter on the wall and start making some cables. Okay, to keep the batteries in position, I just ripped up some 2x4s into an inch and a half square on the strap. There's a couple of places I'm going to go that will be a little bouncy getting to, so I didn't want the batteries come flying up out of there. So that strap's an old strap off a computer carrying case that I just about threw away. Batteries. Batteries drop in. Get the strap adjusted and they aren't going anywhere. And since it's getting kind of late, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. We'll mount the inverter right there and start hooking up the cables. I am making progress here on the power center. So we've got the batteries mounted in. I bolted the inverter to the wall. And since it's kind of a heavy chunk, I mounted the bottom through the uh, cross brace there to help support it so it's not just in the plywood. They put the charger above it. The little charger should work nice. It's got settings for the lithium phosphate batteries. Pretty much will charge anything. 6, 12 volt, anything you've got, just you've got a bunch of different modes, but it didn't have a way to screw it to the wall. So I took a couple of little wooden blocks, put some foam in between, uh, set it on there, pushed the block down to kind of squeeze it between the foam and screwed the top one on. So it's not going anywhere. You could pull it out if you need to, but it's not going to fall out. And then down over here, we've got the 12 volt distribution block. Like negative onto the top, you've got ground lugs here, positive on the bottom, and then blade fuses go in these six connections here. And then those I'll probably, when I run them, I'll run them up the side there. And then across the top, we'll be going to the overhead lights and the uh, exhaust fan that I'll be putting there in the back. Those will be like the first two things I hook up to get. But we'll need to run need to hook up the battery leads for the charger. We'll need to run the wires from the batteries to the inverter and then some wires over to the distribution block. 
Dad just pulled these batteries out of the box because they just came in the other day. Hadn't checked them, charged them. Put the voltmeter on them. They're both reading 12.8 right where they should be. So, I think we'll go ahead and get the wiring started. Okay, when you're wiring up batteries like this, these are both 12 volt batteries and it is a 12 volt system that we're going to be powering. So you want to hook these batteries up in what they call a parallel arrangement where you will hook the negative to the negative and then up to the negative on the inverter. Same with the positive, positive to positive to positive. And it makes like parallel lines running up to the inverter. That keeps the system at 12 volts, but having two batteries doubles your current capacity. So now if you were running, if you wanted, instead of 12 volts, you wanted 24 volts using two 12 volt batteries, you'd hook them up in series. So we take one, flip it around, and then we would hook the positive to the negative. These would be hooked together. And then the negative of this battery will go up to your inverter and the positive of that battery would go up to your inverter. And that would give you 24 volts. And you could keep adding more volts if you need it. You could keep adding more batteries in series if you needed more voltage. 24, 36, 48, 12 volts at a time. But we don't need that. We just want 12 volts and extra current capacity so we'll hook them up parallel. All right, I've been busy making battery cables, and I got to say, I like this little crimper. I mean, you just stick the crimp in there, that comes up, stick it in there, smack it with a hammer. Makes a nice crimp on the end. So we'll cut our insulation back. Get the end in there nice and tight. Raise that up, slide the connector in. I like to kind of push it together using this hand to pull the wire in, that thumb to put the, uh, push the terminal that way, and then give it a few whacks. And you end up with a really nice crimp that ain't going anywhere. Okay, we've got the positive ends hooked together, run up to the inverter. We've got the negative coming down here. We've got one hooked to the battery there. The other one will come around there. So we're ready to make the final connection. We'll check to see the inverter works, and then we'll move on to hooking up the charger and the distribution block. Okay, let's see what we've got on the inverter. Yeah, it's looking good. So we've got no error codes. We've got 12.7 volts coming in from the batteries. AC outputs 190, 119 volts, 60 hertz, like it should be. Shows that it's working. Battery level is one bar away from being full. Load level, we don't have anything hooked up, so it's reading zero. So let's uh, let's hook a load up to it and see if it works. Yeah, I got my little hyper tough work light there. We'll plug it in. And we'll see if it comes on. Look at that. We have light coming off the batteries. Let's see here. Looks good. A little LED light didn't pull much current, so we'll try my little orbital sander here. Hey, right, work! You can see it's actually showing a bar, one bar on the load level. There we go. Oh, that's cool. All running off the batteries. One other thing that the uh, inverter came with is a remote. I was hooking it up to see if I wanted to use it and heck yeah. You know, it completely controls the thing. So it's all shut off. You can click it on. 
and it shows you everything that the screen on the unit does. So we can mount this somewhere in the trailer. It's easy to get to. I like it. Okay, now we've got the battery charger hooked up. It has uh, ring lugs along with uh, you can put some alligator clip style deals on it to charge any kind of battery. Got it run up. It's hooked to uh, shore power. Got the cable hooked up on the outside of the trailer there. And it's sitting there charging away. You see it, that LFP, that's for the lithium phosphate batteries, like what we're using here. So it's set for the right style. And let it charge. Should work good. Last thing we need to hook up is the distribution block. And that's just two more cables coming off the battery running over to it. And I'm going to have to get some more cables. Alright, the little fuse box is wired in. Just a positive and negative wire running down to the battery. So that's ready to go for hooking up the lights, the fan, whatever I want there. Before I close this video out, I think I'm going to go ahead and add the remote control panel for this. I think what I'm going to do is run the wiring up the wall there and since this little panel is easy to remove since it splits right there I'm just going to put the panel right there you walk in the door you can click stuff on and off should work good let me just use the uh, jigsaw to cut a little square hole in there mounted that up had to notch it a little there the way they had that cable coming out to clearance it also paint a notch here for the cable to lay in where it bolts up against the upright so I don't smash the cable. And she's wired up. We'll tuck that probably into the corner when I trim out the corner of the wall there. But for now it's hooked up. And so we come inside the trailer. So we can turn everything on. Next video, probably either the fan or getting the lights or both because we've got it to where we can hook up to the 12-volt power inside, so might as well get those done. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.